friends, family, and homesteaders. How we doing today? So, Frankie and I are working out in the garden. Frankie is driving some stakes so we can stake up our tomatoes. Hey everyone. We're driving stakes in the ground on our fabric right now. We burnt some holes. And we're going to put some wire up to keep these tomatoes straight and strong. It's easy to pick. Good thing. The steaks are on sale. <laughs> We just measure out with the tape, roll the wire down, measure the wire, cut it, and now we're going to put it on there. We're going to put it to one side of the tomato so it all sticks to one side and we can kind of weave it in these bigger holes eventually. Okay. I'm just going to have this empty lane right here. Oh, that's handy. Hold here, babe. Stand right here. Oh no! Uh -huh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay, you need to okay, this is a roll of wire we got. It's probably an eight thick wire. And we just cut sections enough to wrap around the post, basically, and not be too hard. So something like that. Alright, we're going to install this and we'll be right back. And this is the best time to do it. The tomato plants are small. Let's pull it tight. It won't hurt them. We'll work them around it any way they want to go. And this one's going to be a tough one. And pull on it. And tie it like you're tying a bread tie. And the tom tomato plants are pretty small right now, so we'll let them do their thing. But this guy wants to go on that side. That guy's good, and that guy's good. Okay. Now let's pull it tight from the bottom over here. As tight as I can get it anyway. Loop it like a horseshoe and then tie it up. Okay, we'll show you the rest when we get done. All right, we got that wire rope over there. Okay, we have the measure from that last one we just did to make this one. It's only a <laughs> foot bigger, so. Send this in, babe? Mm hmm. Got it. I grabbed a stake and put it there, otherwise it rolls itself up. And that red wire is thicker than this, so we'll definitely have to mash on it. We just got some wire snips. And the bottom's kind of thick too. All right. When I said it voluntarily rolls up, this is what I meant. done. You can see the wire. And I weaved one right here. As you can see. 
that's how it's gonna work. The bigger it gets, the harder it's gonna weave, so we got bigger holes on top to weave our tomatoes in. Hey everybody, um, we are working in the garden. We have some tomatoes growing and we are going to pluck some of the suckers off because the suckers, if you leave them on there, they'll grow into a bush. So you take some of the suckers off and they'll grow up. And that's what we want to do. We want them to climb on this fence and grow up. And that's what we're going to do. And I usually just go to a tomato plant. And as you can see, look at this one right here. It'll show you. This is a branch and this is a sucker. Between every branch is a sucker. And I usually start off, and since this is a big one, I usually take all three suckers. And then you just snap them off with your finger just like that. I kind of pinch them at the bottom and just break them off. Just like that. And there's a sucker. Look at this plant right here. See how it has two leads? I don't want two leads. So I'm going to take the little sucker and plop off the big sucker. This is going to be a harder pinch because it's a thicker stock. But you can still do it. And you pinch it like that. And this guy right here, since it's one of my Cherokee purples, I'm going to go take it in the greenhouse. See this plant right here? It has two arms and it has a top piece. What I'm going to do is take this bottom arm and peel it and then scrape it with a knife and get down to the core of the tomato. Just like that. And this is when I usually dip it in the root hormones but for tomatoes you don't really need root hormones just stick them in the ground and i have wet soil over here as you can tell these are small suckers that i moved in here and i'm gonna put that guy right there and i usually pinch on all four corners and press down and voila it'll shoot off baby roots and actually get some bigger roots in it and I'll transplant it back out to the garden. More tomatoes. Yep. Especially the ones you like. I like the cherry tea purple. <laughs> They're kind of sweet tomatoes. But I also have some, some bigger tomatoes as well. Alright, we'll get back to you in a second. Alright, I have these. They're like sod staples or fabric staples. They're six inches by one inch. I like the square kind because the square kind are easier to press into the ground for me. I get the tomato plant closer, probably to the base of the, I, mean, I get the wire closer, probably to the base of the tomato, staple in the fabric, because that's actually going to hold, not in the soil. And like, just like that. And I would skip two and probably do another. And push it down. Skip two. You can see how this wire is away from the tomatoes right here. You can just pull it closer. Staple and push. And you can weave your tomatoes a lot easier when the, the wire is closer. And that one should be fine because it's close to the stake. Now I'll pull this one out. Good thing about it, it's really loose soil. We tilled it up. Pretty good. Just keep on doing that the whole entire way. But about this wire, you're going to have to come check at least once a week. At least. They've already gotten so big. Yeah. And that's fine if you press the tomato just like this against the wire. It's just going to shoot it towards that direction the whole entire plant. It's not going to hurt it at all. 
and look at this plant right here. See how it's trying to create two heads? This is a branch off. Every sucker tries to create a new head for the tomato and you just go in there, pinch her off, go for the little ones as well. It just takes energy from the tomato plant to grow up and produce tomatoes. You don't want a crap ton of suckers, otherwise you're just gonna have a, a mess to actually pick from. You want it up and tall. And you can see this tomato too. I haven't plucked any suckers from these once I transplanted them into the garden last week. And look how much I've grown. And I just pick them like that. And throw this branch in there. And throw this whole entire head on this side. Be very careful when you do this not to break it. They do bend. Poor tomato plant. <laughs> Something got that guy. I would assume it's the rabbit. It's that guy. I have three rows of tomatoes. I have some cherry tomatoes. That's mostly cherry tomatoes. And these are the bigger tomatoes. Some Rutgers. Cherokee purples. I think there may be a couple early girls somewhere in here. And over here on this run is Romas. And some volunteer tomatoes. They're the bigger variety. And we got some zucchini. They're just Ooh. now getting through the shock. As you see on the, on the leaves, they're yellow. We transplanted them last week, so they're kind of feeling it. Bunch of zucchinis. Some of these are squash right here, these little ones. We can see that guy right there. He took the shock kind of hard, but he'll be fine. And some bigger squash plants. Actually, I have squash. Little baby squash. And one pepper. And that's a baby squash I just transplanted. And a zucchini. Next row we have peppers. These four. These are the jalapenos. And we have some bell peppers. And over here are some banana peppers. And on this run we over here we have it's, I transplanted these yesterday. Cucumbers. The whole row? Yeah. Wow. Right to that point? Right to that point. Okay. And over here, these guys took a beating, but they're starting to come back. As you can see, there's some there, a little bigger. Some okra through this run right here. Sometimes this fabric gets a little too hot. hard on the seedlings. Yeah, it's hard on the seedlings. <clears throat> but it's hella worth it later on, once they catch. What are these? Looks like a mix. Yeah, these are some, um, what'd you plant, some spaghetti squash? Huh? I did a couple spaghetti squash. And <laughs> more squash. And back here, I planted some um, cantaloupe. And over here, I planted some watermelon. I kind of mix it up because I usually try to have my melons out to the sides of the garden because they're going to grow pretty wide and far. And these are more watermelon. Oh, these are our beans. And I'll wait to staple the wire closer to them. I don't think I really have to with those guys. This is Ruby's Homestead, and thanks for watching.